Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India this course on developing soft skills and personality. I hope you have been enjoying this course for the past three weeks. Uh, we are in the fourth week of this course and this week uh, I am going to talk about communication skills and then uh, particularly four important skills which are associated with that. In fact, people have a misconception that communication skills and soft skills are just one and the same. But uh, you should understand that communication skills are actually a major integral part of soft skills or you can look at it as communication skills plus or the missing part of communication skills which we generally overlook. So, that amounts also to soft skills, but soft skills is a larger set and then the subset but which is much important is also what we call as communication skills. But before I start, let us take a quick relook at what we did in the last lecture. The last lecture uh, I just concluded by uh, highlighting how you can break bad habits and form good habits. The last entire week was about habits and I hope you have been paying attention to your bad habits, trying to remove them and trying to replace that with good habits. I suggested that if you want to break bad habits, you can stop the way you started it. So, how do you stop breaking bad habits? Just think about the way you started it and then you break it. How did you start it? You started in small quantity, you started in tiny bits. So, you try to reduce the frequency, the number of times that you are using a bad habit and then try to increase the gap. Okay. So, I was giving the example of uh, smoking a cigarette, if you are addicted to uh, smoking that as a chain smoker. So, reduce the quantity and then increase the gap that is like instead of uh, every day make it alternate days and then after 2 days, 3 days, 5 days, a week's gap and so on. The other thing I highlighted was you should try to replace a bad habit with a good habit and how to develop good habits. So, practicing good habits will actually free your brain and mind and uh, such as not leaving any task uncompleted. So, in this context I talk to you about this Zigarnik effect, where if you leave something uncompleted, the thoughts will come and haunt you. So, unfinished task will hang heavy in your brain, causing you less space for focusing and concentrating on new activities. The other important thing I pointed out with regard to good habits is, first avoid becoming serial addicts, whether you are reading something serially or whether you are actually watching something serially, which is much more dangerous as, uh, especially the television serials, which will kill you in terms of uh, your time and in terms of your focus ability, because they are going to hang heavily in your brain, thanks to what we discussed about Zigarnik effect and they are not going to leave you till you go to the completion, maybe it takes 2 years, 3, year, three years and then it stays there. Now, the other important point I talked about in the last lecture is that good habits and success are inseparable. In order to cultivate habits of success, uh, I said that uh, you first need to practice lot of good habits. Now, it is good habits that will make you indispensable and irreplaceable in any job. Some habits of highly successful people worth inculcating in you. For example, be extremely hard working, do the extra work with a smile even if you do not get paid, never look at your watch and work and then work till you complete it and then your mind stays calm and you can please sleep very peacefully that night. Focus on the most important goal, never spend more time on something that can be completely avoided, there is no point in doing useless work very perfectly, meticulously. Last but not the least, I said that when you do your work, concentrate 100 percent. The power of concentration is such that you will be able to finish any task much faster 
than the rest of the people. Now, with this, uh, I hope that you are able to cultivate some new habits, good habits. Now, the other important part of soft skills, which is, uh, as I said, which is considered in terms of communication skills. Let us look at what is communication and what are the various skills involved in it. The moment we talk about communication, basically we think about verbal communication that we use words either while speaking or writing we use this. I will be specially spending some more lectures on non-verbal communication where you use images, pictures, gestures to communicate. Currently, let us focus on verbal communication. So, when we talk about verbal communication, there are four associated skills uh, in terms of verbal communication that is reading, writing, speaking and listening. In fact, it should be starting with listening and then reading or writing and last but not the least that is speaking. We generally think that we start with speaking, but that is not correct. We actually start with listening. It is believed that even the child that is in the womb of the mother starts first by listening before it comes out and then slowly starts speaking. So, the listening is the first and foremost skill that we try to imbibe in terms of developing our communication skills. So, if you look at it, listening, reading, writing, speaking, although they look to be different skills, they are all integrated of which we can look at listening and reading particularly as comprehension skills. Why do we see them as comprehension skills? Because most of the times when we try to listen to somebody or we read something, we try to understand, we try to grasp, we try to inculcate certain things from others, we try to perceive. Okay. We are just, we are uh, actually receiving, we are receiving the inputs from others. Listening, we are listening from others. Reading, we are reading from somebody who has experienced life and then sharing his or her thoughts and then we are reading about it. So, both sides, they are comprehensive and we are trying to understand. Now, the other side, writing as well as speaking, they are, con they are considered production skills. Now, why they are considered production skills? Because we are actually trying to produce. So, if you look at speaking uh, in terms of using our voice, so we are trying to produce some sounds literally, but we are also trying to produce, we are trying to produce ideas, we are produce to give way, we are trying to use words to our thoughts and then we are trying to influence people. So, in that sense, we are trying to create something. The same thing we do with writing also. So, you know that writing is supposed to be the most influential of all these skills. People have written sometimes single caption, one maxim, one sentence which has changed the world. Novels that have changed the world, essays that have become very inspirational and then thought provoking and then has uh, changed so many people. Now, these are the reasons why speaking and writing are considered as production skills. Now, let us look at the aspect of listening and keep in mind as I said communication skills are integrated. Let me explain how. If you look at listening and speaking, both listening and speaking are considered top skills for winning through group discussions and job interviews that is if you look at it from a professional point of view. But listening and speaking are topmost skills again which are required in developing interpersonal skills also. In order to maintain good relationships again you have to be a good listener and an effective speaker. Now, look at the way communication is integrated with each other. The more one reads, the more one knows. Okay. It is only by reading you come to know of the world even before you actually experience it. So, the more you read, you actually gather from the experience of other people and the more you know. The more one writes, the more one reflects. So, the more you write about yourself in a diary 
about your thoughts in the form of an essay, about a project in the form of a report, about your thesis in the form of a report or a dissertation, about your innermost feelings in the form of a poem, about your experience in the form of a novel or even a very brief experience in the form of an interesting short story. So, the more one writes, the more one reflects and writing is a process of self discovery. You actually discover every time you write something, not necessarily about you, but then even when you are involved in the process of writing, you know about you. And then if you remember, I was telling at the beginning of this uh, entire sequence of lectures, knowing yourself is the first important quality uh, which will give you self awareness. So, writing is helpful in creating that kind of self awareness. And then the more one listens, the more one learns. It is through listening you learn from others. The more one listens, the more one speaks, the more one communicates. And the more one communicates, the more successful one can become. Look at listening as such. I am trying to make you understand that listening is an integral part of communication, though it is much ignored. People generally think that in order to become an effective communicator, it is enough that if you speak and then you write something and most of the times they miss this listening because people think it is a kind of passive form of communication, listening as well as uh, even sometimes people think reading. So, they think that these are passive form of communication and then more importantly they think that it is when they when they try to express their ideas in the form of uh, uh, speaking they think that it is becoming active. Now, listening I want you to understand that is an integral part of communication, though it is much ig ignored because only with listening you will be able to develop good human relationships and communication itself by and large goes hand in hand with human relationships. So, positive relationships can develop only on the degree and intensity of communication. The more intense a relationship, the more deep communication develop. Let us look at some misconceptions about communication. What are the misconceptions about communication? First people think that speaking alone is communication. They think that if somebody is speaking well, they think that he or she is a good communicator. And combined with that, they think that good speaking is good communication. That is speaking nicely, speaking sweetly, they think that it is good communication. There are others who have the miscommunication that talkative people communicate better than calm and silent people, which again is a gross miscommunication because uh, very good negotiations, it is the silent person who actually wins and it is an ability to remain calm and silent when the other person is more talkative and wait for the other person to finish and then communicate effectively. So, this is a misconception thinking that talkative people communicate better than calm and silent people. And then people think that to be a good speaker, you do not have to be a listener at all. So, it is enough that you practice speaking, you develop your vocabulary, you develop your uh, language skills, but they think that you do not have to be a listener. But as I am trying to imply, without listening you cannot become a good speaker. You should also understand some misconceptions about listening. People think that only intelligent people can listen. So, people who are not that educated, they think that they cannot listen at all, which is not correct because active listening is a cultivated behavior. So, you can actually develop skills in terms of listening and then become an effective listener. The other misconception people have about uh, listening is that they compare speaking with listening and then they think that speaking is a more important activity 
than listening. Now, the actual fact is both speaking as well as listening are equally important in effective communication. Then the other misconception is that speaking consumes energy not listening. This is another very gross misconception that when you speak you consume more energy, but not when listening. But active listeners spend as much energy as a speaker or jogger. A research has been done in many uh, foreign universities and then they uh, try to find out how much energy is consumed by an active listener. So, I will talk about maybe in the next lecture or so about active listener, but right now you understand that active listener is a very effective listener and who uses his brain and then complete thinking to the optimum when he or she is involved in the listening process. Now, active listeners spend as much energy as a speaker or they say that even like a jogger. So, they compared with a jogger and an active listener, they found that they are able to spend the energy more or less in the same manner. The other misconception is that listening is an unconscious process, but the fact is listening is an active mental process, hearing is rather an involuntary act. So, I will discuss about these two in the uh, coming slide or so. Speakers can make their audience listen to them 100 percent. This is another gross misconception because speakers cannot make their audience really listen unless the audience themselves want to listen to the speaker. So, you cannot force the people to listen to you, however good you may be in your uh, communication skills, unless they really want to pay attention, unless they think that there is something important in what you are saying. So, you cannot make them listen on their own. Okay. So, you maybe you have to create interest and all that, that is a different thing, but you cannot actually make them uh, listen. What about hearing? Is it the same as listening? Again, many people think that listening and hearing are one and the same. Now, it is a wrong perception because hearing is very different from listening. Hearing if you look at it, it is basically a physical activity, whereas listening is a mental activity. Hearing for example, just on your ears, sounds falling into your ears, okay, touching your ear drums, so causing some kind of sound sensitivity that is all. So, when you are on traffic, you listen to horn sound. When you are even sleeping, you are able to listen, hear the fan sound, you hear the fan sound and then you continue to sleep. You also hear the sound that is made by the birds, the chirping of the birds, but then still you are able to do something else. So, all this hearing most of the times is not going to affect any other activity that you might be doing like driving your car or sleeping. So, it is not going to affect you that much. Okay. You can you can just let your brain do whatever it wants even when the sounds are just falling into your ears. But this sight it is not just involving hearing, but it is involving hearing plus more than hearing and more than hearing it is involving reception. So, the reception of ideas, the reception of the nonverbal cues which are coming, selection. So, there is a filtering that is happening, I am receiving all the ideas you are giving, but I am deciding, I am thinking that this is important and then I note down some ideas. So, I am also selecting, I am not listening to everything. For example, if I am in the railway station and then if I am listening to all the announcements which are made, I hear most of them, but I listen to that one information that is about my train that is going to leave from that particular platform at that particular point of time. So, I also select, then after selecting I organize. 
So, that is particularly with regard to students, when you attend class lectures or anybody who is attending general lectures, you try to receive the information and then after that you select what is important and then you organize, then you assimilate. So, you connect, cohere the ideas that you have organized and then you interpret, you just try to interpret and then try to get meaning. Not only that, you try to evaluate, you try to see whether the person is really making sense, really telling you the truth or really giving you some real influential ideas or it is not so. And then you may also respond, if you are in a lecture, you are not sure of certain things, you can ask clarification, you are still sure of certain things, but you want to uh, know whether it is going in this direction the way you have thought of it in your mind. So, then again you try to respond. Now, so many of the mental activities are involved when you are actually listening. Now, if you really want to become a good listener, what is the first step that you should take? The first step in becoming a good listener is to keep the mind open. So, the mind should be open. As Robert Schuller says this in one of his books, the mind is like a parachute, it functions only when it is open. Okay. So, it is like a parachute, it functions only when it is open. If you keep your mind closed, it becomes dysfunctional, it is not working at all. Now, let me give it an illustrative example of why you should keep your mind open and then I will conclude with the final lesson that you should be learning from this uh, lecture on listening. Look at this small incidents. Students at the University of California were asked by Mr. Agnew of the Department of Medical History for the reaction to the following. So, the faculty gave a kind of situation and wanted the students to react. So, this is the situation, the father has syphilis, the mother tuberculosis. They have had four children, the first blind, the second died, the third was deaf and dumb, the fourth had tuberculosis. The mother is pregnant with her fifth child, the parents are willing to have an abortion, you have to make the decision. So, when you listen, you are given such a case where there is chronic disease and then there is chronic death. So, now this is the fifth child and then you are uh, given the choice of making the decision for the parents. Obviously, like most of you would have thought and then the way you would have responded, most of the students voted in favor of abortion because they thought that uh, the child will definitely not survive because of the chronic conditions in which the other uh, children grew up and then they died. But Mr. Agnew's comment to them, he said, congratulations, you have just murdered Beethoven. Beethoven, for those who do not know, is the deaf musical composer and a child prodigy who gave his first public performance as a pianist when he was 8 years old. So, what would have happened if the parents decided to abort this child? The world would have lost a musical genius. So, the lesson from this is that you should learn to listen without prejudice. Keep the mind open, listen without any prejudice. Prejudice means any kind of preconceived thoughts, any kind of presupposition that you form a preconceived notion that somebody is right, wrong because of the way certain things appear to be. Okay. And then even before you actually experience the communication with the person, 
you decide or you become judgmental about the character or behavior or the action of the person and which is very bad in terms of becoming a good communicator. So, at the end of this, keep this in mind, listen without prejudice, try to keep your mind open and in the next lecture, let me continue with giving you suggestions as how you can become an effective listener or an active listener. With this, I conclude this uh, first lecture of this week. Thank you and then I wish you that you have a nice day. Thank you for watching this video.